You know, I was always meeting with the clients and they were always saying the same thing. When I wear a Mont Blanc watch with a Minerva movement, it's extraordinary. And I wish I could show it to, you know, my friends and not having every time to take out the watch and show the back of the case. So that's how it started. And we had to add quite a lot of components just to be able to ensure this function so that despite the fact that you were reversing the movement, you were still getting a proper information being displayed on your watch. I'm a big fan of Minerva and the way it is finished, the fact that you still have a, a very traditional way of manufacturing with one watchmaker that is in charge of the entire watch, which is not really the case anymore in the watch industry. And uh, to a certain extent, even though they know because it's marked, but they would know I'm the one who did it or not because of the way the beveling that is done by hand. The, no, I'm not exactly my technique, so I'm not the one who did that uh, particular movement. So I think it's quite, uh, quite impressive. We came up with this uh, fluted bezel that was coming from the history of Minerva, 1927. And uh, Minerva was the first, uh, the first uh, at that time, uh, the first uh, maison that, that has uh, brought that uh, fluted bezel, which is a very interesting recognition for the fact that there is a Minerva movement inside the Mont Blanc watch. I have some stones. I have quartzite coming from the, from the Mont Blanc. Mm -hmm. And I have limestone coming from the mountain mm -hmm. that is in Villeray, where we have our manufacturer. You imagine uh, the, the steel case uh, with DLC. Then you put it into a kind of a, uh, uh, like a washing machine, you know, where you have all these uh, elements of, uh, of quartzite and uh, limestone. And you cook it all together for like two and a half hours. And that, and that creates this, uh, what we call distress steel, because then that creates that very specific finishing on the, on the case that gives this unique uh, part. We decided to, to play uh, again that, that story on the, um, on, on the uh, zero oxygen with uh, Reinhold Messner as the first uh, uh, alpinist that climbed the Everest without oxygen 45 years ago. And, um, and we thought we have to work on a, on a piece that can celebrate, you know, uh, that part. And, um, and that's how we started to work on the, on the watch. He climbed without supplement uh, of oxygen and we created the watch without oxygen at all in the movement. Why are we doing that? For a very simple reason is the fact that by using zero oxygen, you are reducing significantly the oxidation that will happen in the movement. Mm -hmm. And therefore, when it comes to the component, the grease, everything, mm -hmm. uh, you are basically uh, ensuring a, a longer life mm -hmm. for, your, for, your, for your movement before you need to service it. Aesthetically, I love it, and especially with this blue gasket mm -hmm. that you have, mm -hmm. uh, that gives a very interesting uh, design element to the watch. You have, again, a very particular design on the dial, with this glacier dial. The unique combination of the two uh, of the geosphere movement that we have developed in house, and, and this amazing story also that we have at the back uh, with this uh, laser engraving technique right. that allows to do any kind of decoration, and uh, and which is uh, all done by oxidation, so opposite opposite concept of the zero oxygen, <laughs> but which is great because then it becomes a permanent oxidation, and that's how it will be 20 years later. Mm -hmm. Your case back will be exactly the same. Again, an authentic story, and, and there's this glacier, of course, mm -hmm. I don't need to explain why it makes sense at Mont Blanc. Yeah. Um, this differentiation and with this, with this glacier dial, I think it's, uh, it's amazing, but also the technique. Yeah. And this very unique technique to create such a dial, which is extremely complex. Right. More than 30 steps to create a, a dial. Okay. And, and finally, the whole innovation that it that comes with, and with no compromise, as you have a real diving watch, mm -hmm. uh, certified uh, ISO 6425, and, and, and. Mm -hmm. So, and this year we wanted to bring uh, another story with another color, yeah. which is the color of the Mer de Glace, okay. the IC, in, uh, in Chamonix, mm -hmm. so on the, on the Mont Blanc. Uh, we're very proud of the origin of the Maison, right? which is indeed about writing instrument, and if you, if you see the entrance on the booth, yeah. uh, and you see this beautiful uh, uh, pendulum uh, that is uh, drawing a, a piece of art every single day, uh, <laughs> uh, I think you, you, you see immediately the link uh, between writing and, and watches. Mm -hmm. But I think that's where it stops, because at the end of the day, we are a watchmaker and we are a, a key player in the, in the watchmaking industry. If I do leather or if I do writing, I'm doing exactly the same in another category. Right. But the stories about Mont Blanc, 
we talk a lot about mountain and exploration, mm -hmm. and we talk a lot about travel. Mm -hmm. And I think these two stories, they are cross category. They are, it's a brand story. So when we launched last year the GMT, it was about the travel. When, the, when you have the IC, it's about the mountain. And, the, but, and you have the same kind of stories for the other categories. So, so there is still, a, a, I think, consistency and a kind of an umbrella mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to the Mont Blanc stories.